Great. Hello and welcome everyone uh, to this recorded webinar uh, for UB Tech Education. Great. So in this webinar, <laughs> we're going to be touching on how to utilize uh, robotics to help teach standards. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and just move into the presentation. Before we really dive in, we want to always direct you guys to connect with us. Um, so we love questions, we love feedback. Uh, so please direct any sort of questions to the email you can see on the screen, info at ubtecheducation.com. And we always encourage you guys to tag us on social media at ubtech.edu. In addition, a lot of the content we'll cover, including the curriculum, can all be found on our website, ubtecheducation.com. So for today's agenda, uh, we're gonna be touching on just a few specific elements. So first we're gonna remind you guys who we are as a company. Um, then we're going to highlight our curriculum catalog focusing on our standards aligned curriculum. Uh, we're gonna kind of justify and talk about why we believe in utilizing robotics to help teach standards. And then we're going to dive into some really great uh, examples from our curriculum catalog. And of course, we'll end with uh, um, highlighting what we're doing for next month. So we have another recorded webinar happening next month. So um, stay tuned if you're interested as well. <laughs> Great, so first uh, um, to remind you guys, my name is Rusty and I am the EDU product manager for UB Tech Education. And I always mention that I put in my LinkedIn handle uh, underneath my email address. Of course, you can email me any sort of questions. Uh, but please, I always encourage you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn for the most up-to-date, interesting, um, you know, uh, musings from, from UB Tech. And my name is Christina Davis, Educational Specialist. You can find my email and um, social media handles underneath my image. Please feel free to reach out or follow or share. Um, we love to see what you guys are doing in the classroom. Great. Excellent. And uh, this is um, one of many webinars for this year. So I hope you guys, this isn't the first one that you're, you're watching, uh, but we'll, Christina and I will be leading these throughout the, the rest of the year. So uh, please uh, always feel free to, to connect with us. Um, first to touch on who UB Tech is as a company. So um, UB Tech is a world leader in creating and manufacturing advanced robotics and AI um, uh, technology. So we specialize in developing robotics for consumers, uh, business use, as well as classroom use with the overarching goal to utilize robotics to help enhance and enable our daily lives. Um, I like to mention, you know, the, the robot you'll see in the, the center of our screen is from our Adibot series. That is actually Adibot S, which is a stationary robot utilized for disinfection, disinfecting locations utilizing UVC technology. In addition uh, to um, our enterprise and business robotics applications, we also have a North American specific division of UB Tech, UB Tech Education. So our main goal is to create um, high quality content uh, to accompany our classroom robotics solutions. So we thrive to provide um, really uh, robust and detailed STEM curriculum uh, to help with students develop those computational literacy and 21st century skills. With that being said, to accompany all of our robotic kits, are you kid beginner, intermediate, and advanced? Uh, we have developed a full curriculum catalog uh, encompassing integrated STEM units. So this catalog uh, with, has the intention of creating strong connections to core science concepts through hands-on experimentation with robotics. To dive in a little bit deeper into our curriculum catalog, we currently have 10 outlined um, units aligned to next generation science standards. So these NGSS aligned units uh, feature multiple lessons per unit and guide the students through activities uh, to really highlight those core science concepts. Um, so later in this webinar, we'll dive into um, particular examples, but we wanna direct you to the full curriculum catalog that we have. 
Again, we'll mention this at the end, but all of these can be viewed on our website as well. So uh, you might ask, you know, um, there are plenty of textbooks out there highlighting how to teach, you know, a part, you know, in uh, specifically NGS um, standards. But why would we utilize robotics to help teach some of these overarching core science standards? Um, our perspective and our philosophy uh, is relatively um, uh, simple in that utilizing robotics and STEM subjects uh, encourage active engagement with those science concepts through hands-on activities and explorations. So um, to kind of rephrase you know, the, this thought, by engaging with robotics, uh, students have the ability to actually participate to gain personal relatable experience to these overarching science concepts, concepts that may be a little bit harder to digest in traditional formats. Um, in addition to uh, you know, that approach of really in integrating and utilizing hands-on strategies to engage with those science concepts. Um, our curriculum in particular has a strong emphasis and focus on students' engagement with the engineering design process, where students are helping to, you know, define, identify a problem, and then go through this, um, you know, iteration, uh, testing, and a, a reiteration cycle. Um, in addition to the EDP or engineering design process, uh, we put a, another emphasis on students um, actively engaging with these 21st century skills, um, which help encourage students to become better problem solvers. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to turn over to Christina, who will die, walk us through, I should say, um, <laughs> some specific examples from our curriculum catalog. Absolutely. So we're going to start with the beginner. So you can see an image of the beginner kit now uh, there on the right. We suggest grades three through five because we hit standards three through five. So this is for NGSS grades third through fifth grade. Um, so in a robot for golf, you can see our little golf club robot, which is a lot of fun. But the students really use this for forces, motion. Um, they get to evaluate. They get to improve upon the design um, and really kind of see all of those science concepts in action. So it's a great overall beginner guide. Uh, we have three lessons in this that focus again on that robot right there, the golf club robot. So and, we'll go to kind of, and just to chime in from my personal experiences, this is one of my favorite robots to start <laughs> off with. <laughs> it's a very quick build, but it's a lot of fun to work with. So just my little aside there. <laughs> right? He doesn't love to like fling little balls around the room, right? It's exactly. a lot of fun. Yeah. For sure. So on the left here, you're going to be able to see all the NGSS standards that we hit. This comes straight out of the guide. Um, so you'll see it just as we see it here today. You can see which standards are touched on or covered in lessons one, two, and three. I will say that a lot of these are um, explored, maybe not so much uh, taught in full, right? So you want to take that in as a teacher. You might have to add a little bit, uh, depending on the background of your students and where they're coming in, right? Fifth graders will have different background knowledge than third graders. So please do keep that in mind. If you're looking at the standards, you will see we, we touch on the engineering design standards, excuse me, which we do in all of our guides. So you will see those NGSS standards throughout. And then this uh, unit particularly is focused on physical science. So again, a lot of those forces, balanced, unbalanced, um, Newton's laws of motion, those types of things are touched on. So we're gonna get more detailed here in the next slide or two. So from those standards in lesson two, the students are working on programming a hole in one, which is so much fun, right? Who doesn't love to do that? So the standards focused on in this lesson are to the left there. So we've got a third grade standard and three fourth grade standards all around physical science. So the driving question here, how can you program the robot to make a hole in one most of the time, right? Because the robot, as in with people, not perfect all the time, although we try. Um, but the students are really going to work on programming it um, with the understanding of the cause and effect relationship that goes in with, I hit this ball, it goes here, now what happens, those types of things. So a lot of trial and error in this one. So we'll go to the next slide and you'll see that where the students actually really focus on with that third grade standard of making observations and our measure, measurements, excuse me, of the motion of the object, they get to reflect that all in this table here. So they're collecting all their data. Does it, did it work? Did it not work? Were we close, not close? And then they get to measure that distance. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, and I think um, 
before moving on, I, I love this connection back to these overarching core concepts of forces in motion as well, because, you know, the students are now not utilizing that, that science concept of uh, motion in a theoretical environment, but they are physically, actually, relatably getting hands on with that concept. So it's a great way to kind of make those connections very, you know, um, apparent and relatable to students, you know, even though, you know, these students are, are very young, may still be kind of, you know, having, you know, developing their own perspectives on the world, they are able to really make that connection back to a, a you know, a pretty large concept in a very tangible way. Well, and not only that, right, we're making it memorable for them. So when they're tested on this in a different setting, they can go, oh, an object moves. I remember that from when I did this. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a, a perfect takeaway, Christina, you know, the um, creating a, a memorable experience with the concept is something that the students are obviously more likely to remember um, and relate to, you know, in the future. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next we're moving up to the intermediate kit. This one hits NGSS standards third grade through eighth grade. So you'll see a wide range here. We're going to focus on the unit, um, a robot for the senses, which uses the MyBot you can see there in the bottom right. Very similar to an alarm clock. That's what it's meant to look like. So this unit focuses all on sensory and inputs, outputs, and the five senses. So a lot of fun things that they get to do in here. We'll go on to the next slide. And I guess I didn't say, and I'm amazed Rusty didn't chime in there. This robot obviously doesn't have wheels. It doesn't really do anything super exciting, right? It doesn't move, but it does have a lot of uh, pieces involved. So you've got that LED eye, you've got the servo, which moves, you've got the touch sensor. So it also utilizes the Bluetooth speaker that you can't see. So it's got a lot of things going on, whereas the golf club was just motion. So we're kind of building up a little bit, even though it might not look like it. You, you know me too too well, Christina, because I was, I was thinking that I was <laughs> in my head. But yeah, in terms of this robot, where I think this robot is very special, um, you have two input components as well as, um, or I guess, yeah, you have uh, one input component as well as multiple output, three output components. So um, you're really also building a, you know, total complete system that is able to interact and also respond, you know, with its environment. So making, again, the, you know, real tangible uh, connection to these overarching themes. For sure. Yeah. So you can see the NGSS standards here. Uh, most of the focus really is fourth grade. That's where it hits most of those standards. And you'll see a mix of life science and physical science because we're talking about those inputs, outputs, and sensory with the five senses. Um, so we get to touch on some of those. And then when we go up to the middle school, the sixth through eighth grade standards, kind of the same, the same focuses uh, as the fourth grade. They kind of tie in really nicely. And then we also have the engineering design ones as well. So um, we're going to focus just on lesson two. You'll notice this guide has four lessons in it. So, and I take that back. I thought I did lesson two. I did not. I picked lesson one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. So lesson one, rise and shine. It must be the next one must be lesson two. So um, we're focusing on building the robot here and getting the students to not only understand the parts of the robot, but also understanding how they live their life. So the students start this lesson actually going with um, creating a comic about how they wake up in the morning. So we're tying back to the alarm clock in that sense, but they're really focusing on um, how do they take in information and how do they respond so that when they're building the robot, then they get to go back and forth kind of with how do I do this versus how does the robot. So you'll see that a lot here. They're gonna talk about their sense organs, um, each of their senses, how they respond to things with, uh, when they sense, um, focusing on how they wake up in the morning. So we'll go to the next slide here. And so you can see uh, just through this, this 5e lesson, and, and I apologize, this lesson and the next one are gonna be a little bit different because we really expand in the intermediate and advanced guides versus the, the um, beginner guides we try to keep as simple as possible because we know that's a, maybe a first experience for a lot of students. So these are kind of set up a little bit different in which I didn't have just one specific activity with the robot I wanted you to know about. I kind of wanted to give you an idea of the full lesson. So the students start by talking about how they wake up in the morning and they're gonna illustrate that through a comic strip. And this is where you can review the five senses depending on the grade levels, right? If you're starting in third grade, you obviously might need to teach some of this stuff and, and that's fine too, we give you ideas for that. But they're going to illustrate how they wake up. 
then they're going to start researching the sense organs associated with the senses that tie back to a sensor. So now they're making the connections with their senses versus robotic senses. So like the LED eye, right? They're gonna talk about how that output device kind of goes with their eyes um, and the speaker and how it goes with our, our voice and, and such. So um, they get to present that in class. Then they're gonna actually take out the UKIT intermediate and they're gonna pick out those output devices and sensors and they're gonna talk about them and what they learned previously and how they can apply that now. Then they're gonna build that robot, the MyBot robot. They're gonna run it and analyze the sample code and, and how it works. And then they're going to go back to how could this help me wake up in the morning? Would it help me? You know, like, is this loud enough? Is this what I need to wake up in the morning? Would I respond to it? And so on. So they're making the connection back to the robot after that. Great. All right. Last but not least, the advanced kit, which I think is a favorite for many. Um, this one focuses on the robotic arm build. So this is a helping hand is the title of this unit. And students really are gonna focus not only on prosthetics, which is the main focus of the design challenge, but they're also gonna talk about sensory with your skin. And they're gonna talk about gravity because it is a robotic arm it has to grab. So we're gonna talk about those uh, science concepts that go along with this. All right, so looking at the left there, you can see this now we're back to sixth through eighth grade um, only. So we're no longer in the elementary. This is strictly for middle school and GSS wise. If you have uh, fifth graders who are comfortable with Arduino or comfortable with Scratch and you wanna move up, that's totally fine. The building pieces are all the same. It's just our NGSS focus here, six through eight. So you can see life science, physical science, and all the engineering design standards. Um, you'll see for life science, we're really talking about, again, those sensory. So a lot of those standards overlap with the last one we just talked about. And then physical science-wise, we're talking about uh, the mass of an object, the gravitational force, gravity, how it pulls on objects, um, and so on. So we'll touch more here on the next one. Okay, here we go. There is a lesson two. I knew I didn't make it up. Uh, so in lesson two, hand it over. The students have already gone through with building the robot. Uh, they did a lot with the history of prosthetics in the first lesson, a lot of sensory stuff. Um, so now they're talking about how does gravity affect the robotic arm's ability to grasp and lift an object. So that arm, I know you can't tell based on the rendering there, but it can go all the way down and then come up. So how can it grab, you know, what does it need? Is it able to do what it needs to do with just how it's built? Um, so they talk a lot about that. So we can go on to the lesson outline there. So in this lesson, they're gonna uh, review lesson resources uh, that talk about gravity on the body, specifically with the use of a prosthetic. So there are a lot of videos and articles the students go through in this uh, section right here to learn about how a prosthetic works and what makes a good prosthetic, right? That's important. And I don't know that um, kids, unless they have used one, have really thought about, oh, I need to make sure it can grip. I need to make sure it has enough force. I need to make sure it can grab things that are heavy, you know, those types of things. So they learn about prosthetics in that way. And then they're actually gonna explore workforce, gravity, and mass through some hands-on activities, including using the robotic arm. And then um, they get to run with the sample code and see how it functions. And they get to add little pieces to have it grab. Did it grab it well? Did it not? Does it need to be a different material? They get to talk about all of that. Um, they have a little challenge that they need to do with the robotic arm. And then they get to come back to making all of those connections between prosthetics and what they learned, the science concepts and what they learned, um, and then the robot itself. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Christina. That was awesome. So Christina, as you guys all should know, you know, is our, you know, curriculum expert on the team. So she, you know, is uh, the mind be behind a lot of that. So um, uh, we're very happy that, that she got to lead us through some of those examples. Um, so if anyone would like to, or I guess I should say everyone should, <laughs> please uh, try to utilize and look at some of our curriculum um, on our website. So um, we ask you can always go to our website, uh, register to create an account to view samples of each of our curriculum units. So um, this is on our website, you'll see create an account. Um, and it looks like we don't have the URL up here, but you guys should all know that URL by now, right? <laughs> yeah, just go to ubtecheducation.com, click in the top right corner where it says register login. Excellent, great. Um, awesome. So that kind of wraps up this quick recorded webinar. Uh, we are going to be returning next month with another recorded webinar 
on uh, July 13th. Uh, we'll host that at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And this one, we're going to be uh, switching gears and focusing on something a little bit different here. And we're going to um, lead you guys through what makes UB Tech unique and different in this webinar, defining the different differentiators. I'll have to work yeah, on and my before we, <laughs> Right, <Tuesday. laughs> Before we get off here, do know, um, while we love seeing you guys normally, we have to do all these recordings because like you, we are out at conferences. So we hope to see you at ISTE at the end of this month in New Orleans. And then next month, uh, Rusty and Tony will be at CSTA in Chicago. So please, if you're at any of those, stop by and say hi. Yeah, please do. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. This has been fun and nice to see you, Christina. And uh, <laughs> we Make hope sure to see you guys, if you have questions or need anything, go back to the beginning, get our emails, uh, just reach out. We'll answer anything that maybe we didn't get to answer in here. Excellent. All right. All see right, you bye. guys next month. <laughs>